I am a wife and mama to two boys, three and nine months. I nursed my oldest son throughout my second pregnancy and went on to tandem nurse. I love the balance of staying home with my sweet boys and working half-time as a reading specialist. My name is Tiara, and I am a miraculous mama. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Miraculous Mamas podcast. I am your host, Elizabeth Joy. I'm a birth doula and life coach, and we are a podcast that believes in empowering women through storytelling and education. Um, Man, I've gone over and over like what I want to say in this intro because there's just so much going on in the world right now that it's um, just really hard to know what to say. It's been a heavy week, heavy couple of weeks. Um, yeah, <laughs> definitely a, a tough time. I feel like there's, I feel like I've learned so much the last couple of weeks just with the resources out there and wanting to expand my knowledge and, um, and, and be better. So I'm looking forward to some really cool episodes that we are going to do on here. Um, and I know that I said that June was going to be all dads, but I had recorded this episode with uh, Ty Randolph and Tika Sumter last month, and I just wanted to release it. I didn't really want to wait any longer to release it because these two ladies are making a huge difference uh, in their communities, and they wanted to start a pro like a community for. Um, they call it the Brown Mama's Guide to the Sweet Life. And they are just so much fun to talk to, Ty Randolph and Tika Sumter. And we recorded this before uh, the the murder of George Floyd and, and everything going on. Um, so it's more, not too... I guess like we didn't dive into some of those deeper issues because the world has like drastically changed in the last two weeks. You know, it's, I mean, not everything has changed, but there's just so much more awareness surrounding the systemic racism in our country. So, um, but we do talk about, we do dive into a little bit of um, the racism in the healthcare system of women, black women dying at a higher rate than white women giving birth and things like that. So um, we do touch on a little bit of stuff, but they're just two awesome women making a difference and they're so much fun to talk to. I had such a great time talking with them and they're such like, they're very inspiring. They're very like, both of them have these amazing careers and are are such go-getters and um And it's very inspiring to me because I am not the best at being a go-getter. And I'm like, man, they're so accomplished. (laughs) And it pushes me to want to do more and be better. And uh, they're moms and they have families and they're just killing it in their lives. And um, and they share a lot with us. So I'm going to go ahead and have the interview start and have them tell you a little bit about their themselves and what they're doing with Sugarberry and uh, and just to hear the passion and what they're doing. So I'm super excited for you to hear from them. All right, everybody, I have Ty and Tika here, and these ladies are changing the game in the in community, in podcasts, and just doing pouring their hearts and their souls into so much right now. And I'm really excited to learn from them today and to hear more about what they are doing. So thank you so much for taking the time to come on the podcast. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So thank excited. You. Thank and, you for having us. And I would love um, for you ladies, yeah, just to tell a little bit about... Um, your community, so Sugarberry, and then your podcast, and just even your introduction into motherhood, and what what is making you passionate about doing this? 
Yeah. So my name is Tika Sumta. I'm just going to introduce you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm an actor, entrepreneur, producer, and creator, co-create, co-founder of uh, Sugarberry.com. Uh, and, you know, what happened three years ago was I had a child in my belly and I was searching for a space where I saw my likeness, <laughs> you know, and also not only just my likeness, but where everything didn't feel like it was death, doom, and destruction for me. You know, whether it was the statistics of me, you know, because my parents got a divorce, I probably wouldn't make it with my partner or simple things as like death within childbirth, which is a real situation. And I just felt like I was seeing so much um, negative around black and brown mamas, um, women of color, um, that I wanted to shine light on the things that were glorious about motherhood for us. I didn't want us to just be a community or feel like what was out there was we're just surviving this thing rather than thriving and enjoying it like everyone else. Um, Regardless if we think our kids are terrorists or not, um, we should be able to say (laughs) that with the same validation that everybody else has. So um, that brought me to actually meeting Ty through a mutual friend and we sat together at um, this place called Soho House, and we were, she she ordered a glass of champagne, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I like you." <laughs> um, and then I I ordered. I was like, and this was like early afternoon, and I was like, "Oh no, judgment, yes, you know." <laughs> and, um, and and then you know the the purpose was to kind of bounce this idea off of her because she's been in the business world. She's you know co-president at LOL, which is Kevin Hart's company. And she also worked at Facebook, super smart woman. So I, I wanted to kind of bounce this idea, whether it was like, yeah, go for it or not so much. So that's where we we met. And then Ty can tell you from her perspective how, how that happened. Yeah. So, hey, I'm Ty Randolph. Um, and so, you know, as you can tell, Tika has a magnetic personality, right? So... <laughs> So it was, so I went in trying to be super skeptical and she's all bubbly and, and really passionate and, and super informed um, with her point of view on why she wanted to create, carve out a space for, for black and brown moms. Um, and so, you know, as someone who's in the podcasting space and, and in the digital world, there's tons of opportunity um, to get started in that space, but sometimes scale can be difficult. And she was describing a really big vision. And when our mutual friend introduced us, she kind of set it up that way. So I thought I was going to go there to poke holes in it in a good way, right? To prepare for what she would hear in the marketplace. And I ended up being sucked in, you know, I was, I was trying to, you know, remain, um, you know, objective about the opportunity, but I just found myself as a mom really thinking, oh crap, I really wish when I was pregnant and, and even then at the time, we both have toddlers, um, you know, her daughter Ella's three and, and my son Niall is two. At that actual moment, I was saying it would be really good right now to have a resource and a place where I could go to for information about, you know, whether it's how, you know, how I'm going to discipline him or what products to use in his hair or, you know, how can I tell if this is postpartum or not and and what I'm going through with, you know, um, juggling work and parenting or where should we take our next vacation? And, and don't get me wrong, there were no shortage of parenting destinations and parenting resources. They just weren't catering to women who looked like us with kids who looked like ours. And so I ended up saying pretty quickly that, you know, wow, I'd be your, your first customer. And from there, and, and we didn't immediately say, oh, let's partner. We, um, you know, I, I was still thinking, okay, how can I help advise? I wanted to help make the vision come to life. And the more research I did about us as a consumer um, segment. And I do a lot of multicultural marketing and have done so, but I never really fully understood, even as a Black mom myself, the overwhelming um, you know, buying power, at purchasing power, and, and general market influence that Black moms wielded. And so it just seemed um, you know, like a no-brainer then to really pursue this opportunity. One, because we're super passionate about it, um, but also because it was just this you know, open... Um, opportunity in the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and when you say that too, I mean, there are, I mean, working as a doula, I know a lot of the statistics with um, black women dying at a rate four times higher than white women in labor. And that's like just something that 
is not talked about. And I feel like you have to create space to have these conversations and for people, whether they're in it to have a safe space to talk about it or whether it's like having like, like figuring out, I guess, like on the other side, like how do we become allies? How do we help out? How does we spread awareness and education around this? And, and I feel like that's the stage that I'm at in my life right now is Mm -hmm. like, how do I like respect this space and be an Mm. ally and a voice, although it's like not my voice. Mm. And those are hard conversations, but I want to learn. And, and we're grateful that you want to ally. Cause I think actually, you know, it's crazy because I grew up in a household where my mom was like, what's a doula? What (laughs) what are you doing? What is this that you're doing? (laughs) And I was like, I need this, you know, but I think, in a world, like, if eventually, hopefully, I know people are fighting for um, the mommy, bu- mommy bus bill, which is, like, having doulas uh, with women who are un- in underserved communities because mm-hmm. a lot of the times uh, choices are taken out of their hands or they don't know about them. And decisions are made so quickly that they don't even have time. You're already in a space of just dizziness and, like, what the hell is this? let alone if you have complications. So that's what the doula is there for, to be with you, to walk you through it, to say, hold on a second. This is what she wanted to do, you know, to make sure your concerns are are met. And, uh, and so I think they're amazing. I think doulas are incredible and, and we're grateful that you are an ally. I think you guys are very important. I think, you know, everybody has a hand in helping. So grateful for that. And I think in terms of, you know, being an ally to Black moms, right? You know, one of the things... So so one, I think that's important work because we are disproportionately impacted because of a lot of systematic um, sort of, you know, imbalance and inequities from healthcare to, um, you know, unemployment. But... And, and those are there are, are real topics that you know we're tackling and that we're having substantive conversations with. Um, but you know, for us, the the most empowering thing for us as moms, um, before we were moms, while we are now moms, is really showing a spectrum, demonstrating a spectrum of right answers and a spectrum of pathways to not just become a parent but to parent, right? Um, and so I think that there is this default when someone says, "How can I?" Um, you know, connect with Black moms. It's it's generally the first, the default is from a position of aid, right? Like, oh my, because the picture of Black motherhood is is one of suffering. And, and not that that's not a, a noble cause to, to give a hand, but we actually want it to provide a very aspirational and supportive community that says, yeah, regardless of socioeconomic conditions now, and, and Tika and I both come from, um, you know, working class to the poor families, like, you know, both of our, our moms at, at one point were single moms. So, so we get that that could be a very real reality, but that's also, we also have very different realities right now, right? We're both in, you know, very healthy, partnered, two-parent households. Um, you know, we've been, been been very fortunate on sort of, you know, the, the socioeconomic side and while aware of different levels of privilege at every level, regardless of, of levels of privilege, privilege every privilege, every mom deserves some sweetness, right? And we wanted to make sure that we gave an invitation to moms, particularly moms of color to whom that invitation is not extended, to live sweeter lives. Um, You know, Tika talks a lot about not just surviving motherhood, but thriving in it, right? We say it shouldn't just be endured, it should be enjoyed. Um, and so we want to open that that spectrum up. So when we talk about, you know, whether it's something as simple as how to take a vacation, we try to make sure that there's an access point, no matter if that vacation is a staycation and you're exploring your local neighborhoods to, you know, if you're traveling around the world, whenever we can do that again. Um, you know, if we're talking about self-care and pampering, you know, what does it look like if you're doing that in a really opulent way? Or what does it mean to to take five wherever you are, you know, and, and focus on and affirm yourself? And I think when it comes to... Um, the whole concept of a duel, a lot of the times for us, it's even explaining that that's an option. 
Tika is one of the first people that I knew who had a doula. She explained a lot to me about what the process was. She told me I was one of the first folks who she knew who black moms who, um, you know, froze eggs or embryos. So I just think even the conversation um, and uh, you having us on today, even that to me is allyship, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick break to talk about a brand that I'm sure you all have heard about because I know I talked about it in the episode where Vito and I announced that I was pregnant, and that is Ava Women. Ava is a bracelet that you wear during sleep, and it tells you when your fertile cycle is. It also tracks your heart rate, temperature, breathing rate, and it compiles all of this data to help... um, predict when you're going to be ovulating. Um, It's a research-backed algorithm that uses this data to detect your five most fertile days of your cycle. And Ava is more accurate and convenient way to track your fertility. You just wear it at night and sync it to the app in the morning to see your fertility status for that day. It also tracks your sleep, your stress levels, and it's a great tool for understanding how your menstrual cycle relates to your overall health, which I know we've talked about on this podcast a lot. Um, And I've been using it now, uh, actually tracking my pregnancy. So I still wear it, although I'm pregnant, and it still is tracking, again, my sleep, my heart rate, my breathing, all of that, um, and giving me insights into my health. And then if you become pregnant, you can hit that you're pregnant on there. So that is my go-to app for um, for getting the updates on the baby, my weekly updates. And now that I'm officially in my third trimester, <laughs> I've followed it religiously on my weekly updates. I still use it to track when Vito and I have sex. I don't know why. I think because I want to make sure that we still have it consistently. So I use it on the app um, and you can track track different things. So it's still um, been a huge part of my pregnancy. I used it before, um, which is why I feel like my due date on the Ava app is a little bit more accurate because I actually found out that I was ovulating between like around day 19. So I know a lot of people hear the myth that you ovulate on day 14, which is not true at all. Um, After wearing the bracelet, I realized I was ovulating around day 19. So um, it was just super interesting to get to know my body before I got pregnant and now to get to know my baby throughout my pregnancy. And right now we do have a $20 off discount for you guys if you want to purchase an Ava bracelet, which is an amazing investment to getting to know your body um, and your fertility. It is so awesome. Um, But you can get $20 off your Ava bracelet with code MIRACULOUSMAMA. Now back to the episode. Um, I'm so passionate about birth work. I can... I know the people around me get earfuls all the time, especially now that like I'm pregnant. My husband will like make one comment. I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, go off and off about (laughs) all of this stuff. And I could just talk about it all the time. Um, But I'd love to dive into just the motherhood journey and how maybe, you know, becoming moms has impacted your work and impacted who you are Mm -hmm. as a woman and um, the importance of the message that you're sharing. Oh. Uh, I think become like who I've become as a woman and still becoming, Oh, well, my selfishness is gone. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I mean, I feel like Ella has been dynamic in my life because in one way it's like, I've, she's first, there's no like, oh, I can just, you know, leave. I can just go at a drop of a dime and hang out with whoever I'm hanging out with or or go to. Um, everything is, my life is carved around her schedule. You know what I mean? And so that's one way she has infiltrated my life, which is, 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 is great because I'm actually, I can't procrastinate as much as I used to. Um, but also just like, there's this just sense of, I just read recently, like, Having a kid is like having your heart outside of your body. And mm. it, it feels like I will do anything for my daughter, you know, to exist in a space. For me, it's about pushing her to be a free child. 
Like, mm-hmm. I don't want her to have a lot of the baggage that I have or have grown up with. And I want her to walk in a store and not feel threatened, you know, and just be like, hey, y'all, you know what I mean? Whether she has the money to buy something or not. It's like the mm-hmm. simplest things, but like I am, my mission for her and other children are let them be free. Let them, let them play in their own little existence. Like, um, and also, you know, growing up, I heard a lot of like, do as I say, not as I do, you know, right. um, you know, your right. child, you know, uh, you guys are meant to just like be there. We we're the talking. Yeah. Piece, the adult, be seen, but, not like, heard. Be seen, seen, not heard. <laughs> not heard. And for me, honoring her feelings, and I'm not saying every little thing I'm like, yeah, what, what can, what can we do? You know, <laughs> but when she's frustrated about something and says, mom, I'm really frustrated. And, or she comes back and says, I want to apologize. I mean, I feel like Nick and I, my fiance are doing something right. Like honoring her moment of whatever's going on inside her little body and her emotions. So it made me more um, in tune with mm. my feelings and how I'm acting around her as well. Um, Cause she, <laughs> she mimics what I do sometimes. Like the other day she looked at me and she goes, Oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. <laughs> I go, who's that? And she goes, that's you, mom. Oh God, Jesus, help me. <laughs> and it just, it just made me, it made me more aware of, holy crap, Tika, get it together. Or I'm not perfect. Like, it's okay not to be perfect, you know? So it just made me more in tune with me, and it's made me more, more in tune with emotions, you know? Uh, so that's that's been my journey. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think for me, one of the things, and, and I was thinking about this the other day, because Tika and I both described ourselves as careerists, right? And so I, I made a joke. I was like, we are the most unlikely of moms to start a parenting company. Um, because I had this idea of, of what perfect moms look like or what moms looked like, right? Mm-hmm. So I was so focused on my career and, you know, sort of my mobility that, um, you know, the concept of like, oh, being home by a certain time or like she was saying, being completely selfless or um, it, it just felt very different. So I thought, oh, the baking and the crafts. And I'm, I'm not really that kind of mom, super attentive, but it just, um, you know, doesn't have a, a very Martha Stewart-esque manifestation, right? <laughs> um, and so, and, and so it made me, but, but what it, but what being a mom has done though, because I had been so focused on work, it made me think, particularly in my work about parents in the workplace and really advocating for more care and grace for them because, you know, all around we're working with, you know, people who are mothers and you don't think about the lives that they're literally responsible for and all of the asks that are on them or, you know, the millions of emotions and needs. And so I'm definitely a lot more sensitive to that. And I think, you know, having struggled with infertility prior to conceiving, I also understand the privilege, you know, of of motherhood or parenthood by by whatever means you arrive at that. But it's just instilled me with a level of gratitude um, and awe, really, right? In in my case, I really feel like the literal miracle of childbirth. Um, But also just how... um, undereducated, I think that, you know, women are about what those pathways and decisions and potential hiccups could be along the path, um, you know, as we get more options to sort of like delay or forego or explore alternative means. I think a lot of us still find ourselves um, having a more difficult time of it. And I know for me, I wish that I had just had more information prior to, like I didn't, you know, when I was you know, I went immediately from saying, oh, one day and, and knowing nothing about my, you know, sort of, you know, fertility profile, if you will, um, to having to learn immediately what AMH and FSH and, you know, uh, freezing eggs versus ovaries and IVF or donor eggs. And it was overwhelming to me to even understand that those would be potential 
possibilities, hurdles, or pathways. So, so I would say, you know, just being more empathetic, but all, and, and then one, and feeling sort of an urge to either help other moms or, or inform, you know, as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. There definitely is a big lack of education out there. I feel like people don't figure it out until they hit that roadblock. You know, it's not like not yeah. knowing that we have these different options. It's like, okay, like now what? And then you have to research yes. and figure it out. Um, I'd love to talk real quick about being working moms. And first I want to ask the the question, but I want to know how you feel about the question. When people ask you, oh, you're a working how mom, do you how do you balance <laughs> Life. But, yeah. but 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 your part your partners don't get asked that question ever ever, ever. never it's crazy um yeah it's crazy because and I think I mean obviously women are uh, it's assumed because of the history of women in this country or around the world has been the caretakers right and the people who have the child and who stay with the child longer and all these things which is very true. Um, but you know, also what's happening in this world, um, when women got the, you know, when, when war happened and they actually started working, they no longer wanted to be in the household really as much as before cut to now where a lot of women are now the prime, like the, the, yeah. the leaders of their household finance wise, you know what I mean? Making more money than ever, getting more education than ever. So, um, For me, it's just been, it's weird because I love to work a lot and I really enjoy it. People are like, what is your, what what hobbies do you love? And I sometimes try to create them because I'm like, (laughs) I don't really have any, like, I like to lay on a beach. Like if that's a hobby, um, but like, I love to create and I love to see the execution of that happening. And, uh, and so for me, I'm usually out of the house, probably like. I'm at, I'm from like 5 a.m. to sometimes 9 p.m. at night. And sometimes I don't get to put Ella down or I, I miss out on certain things. Um, but for me, I don't think there is balance. I think it's going to be a give and take. If you are, you love your career, you're going to, you're going to miss out somewhere, whether yeah. it's, I, I can't go to the, the jobs picnic because I want to hang out with my daughter or whether it's, uh, I want to, I want to be part of a a, a work project and Mm. I'm going to miss out on something with my daughter. So I don't think there is any balance. I think you're going to miss out on something. I think where the magic lies is saying, I'm okay with this. And trying to figure out the pathway to be okay with it for you, whatever your job is. Uh, So for me, it's saying, Pika, you're not going to be a part of every single moment and that's okay. I think COVID has made me very okay with that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It gives me like, girl, I don't need to be here for everything. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, we could use a break <laughs> yeah. in a bit. Well, Shout you, out you to know, I, and it's almost like one of those times where it's like, that's, it's the wrong, like, not to your point, not interested in the question, right? Because it almost implies that like, moms have a hard time balancing. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, whether it's easy for them or not, it's just been something, or for us or not, it's been something that has been expected. If you know a working mom who has a whole kid at home, right? Like the majority of moms are good moms. (laughs) And and, and, and when I say good, I don't mean in some sort of like idealistic sense. I mean, they're, they're putting in the effort, they're caring for their children, they're caring for their families. And so a lot of times that question is really loaded because when asked, particularly from either non-moms or from men, the idea is, is are you going to drop one of these balls, right? Like that is really the question. When the better question is, are you caring for yourself? Because, you know, leaving the workforce or maternity leave and coming back, the idea is like you have to double dutch back in often to make sure that it's there's not the perception that you can't handle what you were handling before. So the balance of it all is really about like, oh, we're not going to see a lack of productivity. It doesn't, it's not really caring about how, you know, sort of loaded <laughs> you are. Right. So, so, cause, and because women are expected to be such caretakers, but I think particularly to the point of becoming more productive better time management for, for me personally, becoming more empathetic. Those, those characteristics make for the best leaders, for the best CEOs. So, you know, I think when you're searching for folks to climb the ranks, 
unlike, you know, for a period of time, and I feel like this is changing, women would often get looked over for opportunities or, or start to stunt their growth, whether you're in entertainment or, or you're behind the scenes. Um, you know, it was a, a really, it created a real ceiling afterwards. But the last thing I'll say, and I don't have any stats for this, but I wonder the percentage of Black moms who are stay-at-home moms historically. Because if you look at just sort of socioeconomically, the, like we were talking about sort of the inequities and imbalances, I would, if I had to guess, and this is again, no science, I would assume that there were a higher percentage of us who were working moms historically in this country, right? Just just generally speaking, thinking about, um, you know, sort of the history of African-Americans here. I come from a strong, you know, line of, of working um, women who sometimes, you know, had periods of stay at home, but most of the women in my family that begin to recount worked in some capacity at some point. Um, so, so yeah, I'm much more interested in the question about, are you caring for yourself? Because I find that moms in particular end up expanding their capacity to care for others. It's like, not only are you doing your job, you're still taking care of your household and now you're taking care of a child and you're generally investing more in your friends than your, you know, from a compassion and a time perspective than, than your, your partners. If you're, you know, in a male partner, you know, the, the, depending on the type of partnership you're in. So it's really like, okay, with all of this going on, I know you're going to juggle, right? Mm-hmm. If not balance, but, but are you taking care of yourself? Yeah. I love that. I love like changing that. And that's why I said, how do you feel about this question? Cause I feel like it, it can be a very irritating question, but I didn't look at it in the light of, well, then it's kind of saying like, can you actually, you know, like, are you actually bound, which ball are you going to drop or whatever? And it's like, no, I mean, women, we have compartments in our mind that help us. I mean, I feel like right now I have right. pregnancy brain, so there's like nothing going on. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but- I, still, I still say I have pregnancy brain and I'm not pregnant. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's... They call it mommy brain, so it's generalized. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> which I've heard is a thing as well, so... Yes, yes, But yeah, I mean, I feel like it's definitely a tough question because like I said, your the partners never really get asked that. And, um, and I love the question of like, how are you caring for yourself? Because if you are working and taking care of your kids and doing all these things, like how do you take care of yourself? Do you guys want to share how you yeah. do? Oh, how do I take care of myself? Um, I think for me, it's just either a a great bath. (laughs) You know, it's the simple. You realize as you grow up, it's the simple things in life. It's no more clubbing and standing on a table dancing. It's more, let's take a bath and have time to myself and light a candle, maybe buy some flowers for myself, um, eating chocolate. You know, I think it's like, for me, it's the simplest things, watching a whole show, you know, it's like, girl. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think, you know, I think every mother out there or mother to be can understand like your time, your time management is everything. And you just sometimes can't find moments in the day for yourself. So yeah. that's why I always say sometimes it's just the little things. I agree. And this isn't a shameless plug, but I've actually found um, our podcast, The Sugar, which, you know, you say, oh, you're going to do, you're starting a company and mm-hmm. you've got these other jobs and you've got these kids and, and, and now adding one more thing. But just the camaraderie of other moms who are going through similar experiences and being able to let your hair down and laugh and have a non-kid, non-partner moment where you really just get to indulge in whatever we're feeling that week or experiencing that week. <clears throat> That has has been a, a huge relief. So I think just um, that that any any part of sweetness is just a bit indulgent. Like the best part of every day, one is is one like when when my son wakes up in the morning and you get to like you know that first hug and kiss where because he's not super cuddly all day long. He's on the move, but in the morning, he, you know, you can get a couple hugs and kisses. Then you get that time again right before bedtime, and when the house is but right either before or after that moment when the house is completely quiet and no one's up yet, or when the house is completely quiet because everyone is asleep, it's like uh, I can hear my thought. <laughs> Uh, that is if that if you can do that and I've been I've been changing habits lately I've been going to bed at 10 o'clock which I'm a night owl like my senses come on late so I was like you know I mean they come on really late like my creativity but I was like you know what Tika sleep we just had somebody on um, our podcast recently who was like sleep is the best thing you can do for yourself for your health you know for your body and I was like I've been staying up so late I'm talking sometimes 2 to 3 a.m just mm. like 
thinking and do, writing and all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to go to bed at 10 o'clock. I've been going to bed at 10, waking it up at 6 30, 7 a.m. when nobody's up and yeah. walking the dog. I mean, it's been incredible. Um, so if you can try that once or twice a week, that would yeah. be that it's amazing. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick break to talk about one of our amazing sponsors, and that is Uncommon Goods. So I got on the website the other day trying to look for something for Vito for Father's Day, and they have the most unique, cool options on there. And whether your husband or brother or dad, whoever you're shopping for, likes to grill out or is a bourbon drinker or loves to read uh, or enjoys puzzles. You can get personalized, amazing gifts on here for any of your loved ones. (laughs) But obviously right now, I'm looking for Father's Day. Um, They have some really cool dad books. And while I was looking on the site, I started to like wander off and start looking at uh, the baby stuff. And I even have like a full wish list on there. They have so many cool things for baby, for your kitchen, for you, no matter who it is, you're going to find the most unique and personalized gifts on the Uncommon Goods website. And like I said, they have things for everyone. Thousands of amazing, unique gifts. Um, If you're looking for something extra special, Uh, for Father's Day or graduation, you're going to find it on this site. Uncommon Goods also donates $1 for every purchase and has given more than $2 million to nonprofit organizations like RAIN, the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, and the IRC, the International Rescue Committee. And you know that we love supporting companies that are giving back and making a difference. They support good causes like paid family leave and a fair living wage. They don't sell products made with fur, feather, or leather. And they support small businesses and local artists. Uncommon Goods knows that finding the perfect gift can be hard. So they want to make it fun and easy for all of the listeners. Just go to uncommongoods.com slash mamas to receive 10% off your purchase. That's uncommongoods.com slash mamas for 10% off. Now back to the episode. I would love to um, dive into your podcast a little bit. Um, you guys have brought on like a lot of amazing women on there. And I'd love to just kind of hear how your community is responding and why it's important to get um, like women in leadership on Mm -hmm. to have these conversations. Yeah. I feel like we've been super lucky with uh, the guests that we've been uh, fortunate enough to to book. And um, I just think, Sometimes I, I like to tell people constantly like, oh, I just ran from therapy. I just came from therapy, you know, because sometimes what happens is when you hear somebody's story, but they don't look like the thing that you expected, you don't, you feel less alone, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the times, especially um, black women feel alone because a lot of the times we don't get the chance to say, oh my God, I'm so tired of this child. And what can I do to um, refocus, you know, whatever it is, you know, we have experts on to talk about health and talk about mental health and talk about IVF. Or if somebody who is single came on and and said, well, I froze my eggs, you know, the Mm -hmm. fact that that's only the second woman I've ever known in real life (laughs) to freeze their eggs is insane. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so I feel like, you know, at every... I think Ty said this earlier, socioeconomic place that you are, no matter where you are, it's aspirational, it's inspirational, it's encouraging, it's laughter. Um, So I just feel like we needed to hold grace for one Mm -hmm. another on this podcast. We needed to hold space for one another. And we needed to just let each other off the hook in Mm. general. Like, girl, you are doing just fine. You know what I mean? Um, And That is like, I wanted it to feel like we are in a living room and you're talking to your girls and listen, everybody's invited to listen to it. Um, but it's just a perspective. I feel like that we haven't really, um, been in the space to, to dive into and indulge in. So that's what the sugar is. And every guest has given 
the listeners and us, it's every single one at some point, this sort of aha moment or that kind of like off the hook moment, right? Where it's like, oh, you too, you know, whether it's, um, we had Sarah Jakes Roberts on, you know, for an upcoming episode and she talks about being a teen mom and a single and a divorcee and then going on to like find love in this beautiful blended family and be the first lady of a church, right? Or, um, you know, we've had Bracia Webb on who's, you know, at the high of her career and saying, okay, I'm going to take a pause and like start thinking about fertility planning or someone like, you know, Tia Maori, who, who was very vocal about women not being bullied um, with their bodies after, after childbirth. And I think for all of us, it's kind of this moment where, oh, if she's going through it too, or if, if she doesn't have it all figured out, you start to feel much better about yourself as, as a mom and as a woman. And, and you start to think, oh, I've, I've got this, or I'm going to get through this, um, or I can do that too. So um, we found, so to your point about, or to your question about the audience response, um, you know, we get, we get great feedback across social and, and reviews, but I think what, where we think that it's resonating is because every moment, every episode, we ourselves end up in this situation where it's like, oh, I feel so lifted after that conversation. <laughs> right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good though. I mean, it's it's always super nice to to have inspiring guests on. And, and just even me like talking to you guys, I always like, I get when I have like guests on that like, are inspirational too. I'm always like, you just feel like so excited for this episode to come out and for your listeners to listen to it and hear the information and, and be like, Oh, me too. Like, Oh, I've been there. You do hear in motherhood that it can be just so isolating and lonely. And so building community is so, so important. For sure. You know, that that's actually really true, even about the company. And maybe that's why, you know, Sugar Berry is so, I, I, I can't speak for Tika, but just special to me. I, I thought it was a good business idea. We talk about content, commerce, community as being the key pillars, but I didn't realize how much I would need or did need a community of moms. You know, mm-hmm. there were just so many things I wasn't talking about. I was experiencing them. I, I didn't, but I never said out loud because there either wasn't an occasion for, or you can't talk about it with your, you know, girlfriends who don't have kids where you're like, oh, should I be considering therapy? Or I'm really struggling with like disciplining my kid, or I'm just tired. You know, like those things don't come up. And then all of a sudden when you're surrounded by people with a similar experience, you find yourself sharing and just kind of releasing. So that community element of it, I think you're right. It can't be underestimated. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm a big believer in community and I feel like with the quarantine stuff too, it's been like, I was telling my husband, I'm like, I, for my mental health, for my soul, like I need to see people. Like I I am about to like go crazy. Yes. (laughs) Um, so, um, I would just love to hear your guys's, if you can think of like a specific thing, um, just the best parenting or motherhood advice that you have received so far. Oh, best parenting or motherhood advice. Ty, you want to go first? <laughs> oh, um, I feel like there's so much. And I'm they, like, I don't remember any of it right now. <laughs> there, so there are two, because this is this one, and I, I hate that I'm not thinking of one from the, the podcast right now, but one, um, and this is someone who we work with on the finance side, and um, she's a grandmother. And so we, I was first telling her about the idea, and she said to me, that's great, because there are a whole spectrum of right answers. And I've quoted her ad nauseum, but... <laughs> That, um, that was, that's true. Like there's no one right way. And I always think like, well, even if there are principles that work, and I always thought this way about my marriage, like there could be things that work for us, but I don't give relationship advice because you're not me married to that person. So it's, Mm -hmm. I mean, the general universal principles that probably apply, like be good to people, right? right? Be a (laughs) But I can't tell you what to do in your relationship. I could share my experiences and hope that they empower you. But um, so, so that whole concept of a whole spectrum of right answers was empowering. And then practically, I had someone give me, a girlfriend of mine, give me a registry when I got pregnant. 
And she told me, these are the things that you need. And I got everything on that list. And she was like, it was like the non-registry registry. She's like, here's, I'm only going to give you the stuff that you'll actually use. So I got all of those things and I purchased her things myself. And then I registered and got all this other crap. I only use the things on her list. We got to put that on the that yeah, her list. Yeah, I on need the, to see this. <laughs> everything else you won't use. Like even your crib, like for the first couple of weeks, it's just like for, at least I'm, with my kid, it's for kicks and giggles. It's more for you than for them. So that list would, was so helpful to me. Um, and I wish I just would have stuck to it verbatim. So mm-hmm. oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm, my mom's advice um, would be, you know, start where you are. You're not going to have everything together, you know, in one false swoop. You just became a mom, like literally <laughs> when you did, you know, and you're not going to know everything. You're not going to be able to integrate your life with their life as quickly in your mind mm-hmm. as you think you are. And that's okay. Uh, you've been in your body for longer than you had a kid probably. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just start where you are and, and be I would always say be gentle and kind to yourself. Mm. I think sometimes we're so violent with ourselves and our thoughts and what we're doing wrong or right. I would say that. And then, yeah, for, for I think, just everyday advice, um, they grow out of stuff so fast that don't don't pile up don't pile up a bunch of junk. I'm telling you, I, have, I feel like I can have a giveaway in front of my house. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> And I'm what we're starting to do now with Ella. She's three. Every time a toy comes in, we're giving a, we have her pick out a toy to give away to a hospital. That's so, so good. Oh, yeah. Tika, there's one more you have to share because when you said this, I don't know if you've ever said it as advice, but it's true. And I think if you can let people off the hook this early, then we would may not get down the path of thinking we're doing it all wrong. You talk a lot about like that magic moment when you first see your baby. It may not <laughs> happen, but it's important because I didn't even feel like I'm like, I'm, I had a C-section. I'm like, is he, is he good? Like, but I didn't feel. <laughs> oh, yeah. But even that moment, Tika talks a lot about it, could make you feel immediately like, oh, I'm failing at this. Mm-hmm. If, if yeah. It's-, it's just that moment of having a child and you might have that magical movie moment where you see them and you're like, oh my God. I personally just looked at her and she looked at me and I was like, that, that's it. You, <laughs> you know, okay. And she looked at me like, girl, put me down. <laughs> you know, I'm cold. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> so for me, that moment was just like, I, I like a date that you're like, uh, not sure if we're going to stay. We have no choice, you know? <laughs> so, so be easy with yourself on that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I recently um, interviewed a uh because may is maternal mental health awareness and so i interviewed a a maternal mental health psychologist and i was talking with her because i feel like i've already gotten some mom guilt because i i'm six months pregnant and i just don't feel the bond and i'm like i feel Mm -hmm. like i should feel like that like i love birth like i love birth work Mm -hmm. i love being involved in it i can't wait to give labor Pregnancy is kind of lame to me. Like, it's just, it's like... That was I, our first episode. That was what you should listen to. Yeah. That was our very first episode. Seriously. I'm going to listen to it. Yeah, I'm for Seriously. sure. Am. Yeah, because I'm just like, man, this, like, people are like, oh my gosh, are you so excited? I'm like, yes. No. Like, I don't know. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm happy that she's in there or he's in there and I'm yeah. happy I'm having it. Right. But like, not a pregnant, being pregnant, like... The, the carrying isn't for everybody, you know? And yeah. that's what we want to let you off the hook with. Like, look, I'm excited to have the baby, but, you know, pregnancy sometimes sucks. And people are so scared to say that because of the halo we put around it. Yeah. So much, you know, and I'm grateful that we get a chance to be impregnated and all that good stuff. That doesn't mean the carrying of the cause is like for everybody. Mm-hmm. And and the and different people, I can't remember, I don't know if you said this, Tika, or one of our guests, but not everyone loves the same phases, right? Like different people are stars in different phases. So maybe, you know, there are women, we've had several guests on the podcast who are like, pregnancy was a breeze. I love pregnant. I could be pregnant all the time, right? And then there are others who are like, yeah, save that part. I just love it when they're so little. And, you know, for me, I'm like, okay, now you're a toddler. We can communicate. This is getting <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a bit easier. So I just, I think that, but, but by the way, I think that that could just cause us to spiral. I found... 
when I think I'm doing something wrong and I'm really nervous about it, it just builds on the anxiety around it. So if I think I should be farther along with... like, like I, I used to feel very uncomfortable driving him around. And then I got so caught up in the anxiety of that that it just became... It spilled over into other areas because I thought I was supposed to be more confident in it. And so I would just say like, however you feel is how you're supposed to feel. You're not a monster. So right. it's like, <laughs> it's like, but we feel like that, right? Because we're judging ourselves so much. That's the, I think the violence that we were talking about earlier, because those could become violent thoughts. Like to say, oh, I'm not bonding with my child. All of a sudden that's an accusation on you as a human. It's like, oh, you're a horrible person who doesn't bond with this miracle of life. <laughs> <laughs> right. But no, I had like extreme heartburn for so, like there was a whole trimester where it's like, I experienced my child as like a lump in my chest. <laughs> it's like, okay. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. No, I'm definitely going to listen to your guys' podcast then because I, I need to hear some of that. <laughs> um, yeah. I would love to ask you guys if you have a go-to resource that you find yourself going to whenever you have motherhood questions or... Um, just anything, you know, if, if there's like a specific website or book or another, and you can't say your own resource, you have to mention another <laughs> one. Right. Um, I think it was just more so my mom, cause she's had the most experience with kids. You know, she raised five of them, even though we have some differences of how we're raising the child. I think it was her or friends, but I think you, you, you're literally learning on the job what works for you and what works for your child. So I would say, you know, yeah, it was mostly my mom, I would say. Same. And again, not a shameless plug. I won't say our site or, or our podcast, but that was actually the, the, the whole sort of founding principle. There wasn't a, a site. I went to a lot of them and I won't call them out by name. Um, I bought a lot of the books. Um, and even from the beginning, when you don't see someone who looks like you on the cover and, you know, if the experiences don't sound similar to yours or the babies don't look like the baby you're about to have, not that every child, ha everything that I consume has to be about, you know, Black children and parents, but with there being so little of it, it, that too can cause you to feel disconnected from the experience because you're saying, okay, where do I go for my resources? And to, to, there was no, um, you know, assembled community. Now I would later find out about like some Facebook groups and stuff, but at the time they were just so hard to find. And most of those that we've discovered has been because like a writer who's writing for us or something, you know, like turned us on to these different resources, um, including like mental health resources for moms and, and all. But again, where that lived is like, this is the place I could go every day to be sort of like my guide or resource. I just couldn't find one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, basically this is why you've created your own. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I want to thank you ladies so much for coming on and uh, for sharing with us. I'm super excited to check out your podcast. Um, where can people find, follow, learn more about you at? So uh, for me, this is Tika. You can go to uh, for Instagram, it's at Tika Sumter. And for our website, it's uh, the community on Instagram is uh, at the Sugarberries. And you can always go to our site, uh, sugarberry.com. Hi. Yeah. And our podcast is The Sugar, S U G A. So you can get it on, um, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, any place where you listen and download podcasts. Um, and you can find me on all social media channels at Ty Randolph. That's T H A I. Awesome. Thank you, ladies, so, so much. I'm looking forward to, um, again, listening to that podcast because I definitely need it. Um, because there's also like shame around it too. Because then it's like, well, you should be grateful for that you could have a bit, you know, like all this stuff. And so yes. it's like, I feel like I can't admit these words out loud that oh, like yeah. pregnancy's lame. <laughs> but, yeah. Now, if you, know. you if you will do yourself a favor, if you listen to the just if you just yeah. want to listen to the first episode, I'm telling you, it will let you off the hook. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I definitely yeah. will. I'll listen to it today. Uh, but thank you ladies so, so much. I know that even though we're in like weird times right now, like people are stuck at home more. I feel like people are also busier than ever because yes. all of a sudden you are, you have to work and mom and like your husband's in the background and you're like, whatever's over there. You know, it's like, just like 
somehow yeah. chaotic and it's still hard to get together. So I really appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Likewise. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thank you. And I, like I said, I just had so much fun talking to to these ladies and I can't wait to see what they do next. I did end up listening to their podcast and uh, and it was really cool. Like it did that just even that first episode hearing that like you don't have to love your pregnancy to love your baby was really reassuring for me. I know that um, I've just had a hard time bonding and and stuff like that. So it was it was so nice listening to that. I also know that I had asked them during the interview about like, I'm in my own process of learning to be an ally. And like I said, this interview was recorded before all the recent events. And I feel like I've learned so much more and been able to, um, to get involved in some stuff in my community to support black doulas and black midwives in my community, um, supporting their education to make, a difference and to be able to provide doulas um, for black women going into labor and delivery to have an advocate for them to help uh, (laughs) to help the craziness that does go on. I mean, it's, I know that for me, there's, I would be scared giving birth because the statistics, because of the statistics in our country. So um, I've been able to find some local places that I can donate and support and be a part of. And I'm super, super excited about those partnerships and, um, and any of the ad money coming in, um, from the podcast or from Instagram this month, I am donating percentages of it to give back to communities to the black communities right now who need it to supporting justice for George Floyd. And obviously my passion is motherhood and pregnancy. So, um, most of it's going to be going to help, like I said, supporting black midwives and doulas to help people get the resources that they need when it comes to birthing. Cause when you have a doula present way, you're way less likely to have a lot of these things happen and even more so if you're able to afford uh, or have a black midwife, then uh, then your chances of that risk decrease drastically. Um, so I'm super excited to be able to partner with with some people and to give back into the community and... Um, yeah, man, what a what a crazy time it has been. I know that it's this last week, uh, the last maybe two weeks, I've cried almost every single day. I just feel like the things in the world seem so heavy, and um, and it's been very eye opening to recognize the privilege that I've had and. Um, and to realize the ways that I can be better and do better and um, and raise my kids better and stuff like that. So I'm super excited for some upcoming episodes. We are going to continue on with our dads for the month, um, but I am going to be doing an episode with a midwife that I'm super excited about. I'm going to um, try to get... There's a few people that I've reached out to on to talk about how to act to actively raise um, non-racist children. I find that um, hasn't really been a conversation that I heard much about, excuse me, until like the last couple weeks. And obviously that's something that I want to be able to do with my kids and there's tons of books and resources. So I've reached out to a few people to see if they'd be interested in coming on and talking about it. And I'm just super excited. I'm going to continue on. Um, like I said before, I'm going to be bringing some different experts on as I'm approaching my due date to talk about a lot of different things, um, to talk about placenta encapsulation and delayed cord clamping and giving your baby the first bath and, um, all different things included in birthing plans and talk to people about, um, why these things are important and what you can do to, um, 
make sure that you have those options where you're birthing. Anyways, I love you guys. I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you've had some really good conversations with your family and friends this week. And I will talk to you later. Love you.